Good morning, Passion Church. Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone this morning. Praise the Lord. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We've had a great weekend, a wonderful women's conference. We trust and know that many, many women were blessed and encouraged and got some answers for their lives so that they can move forward in God. And we're just so glad to be here this morning with all of you. And we're just going to stand and worship the Lord. We are living in the overflow. You know, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it looks like out there, we live in the overflow of the love of God, of the glory of God, of victory and peace and joy and happiness and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let's stand and sing about living in the overflow this morning. Glory.
Jesus Christ. His goodness, His blessing, His mercy, His grace, everything that He has to offer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. You know, we're surrounded today by a Heavenly Father that loves us. Yes. Everywhere you go, you can't get away from them. He said, I'll never leave you or nor forsake you. Surrounded by them. And that's why I know today I'm surrounded. I wrote this song with the help of Kelly about a month or so ago. We dedicated it to our, we dedicated, I think it was on Father's Day, back in Father's Day, we to all the fathers who do their very best to stay in age to keep the head above water but to keep their family surrounded in the presence of God Thank you, Jesus. and I hope it will bless you today and remind you that you are truly surrounded Thank you. but in order to become surrounded by God you have to lay your heart on the altar and come as you are I bowed humbly before the throne. I came naked and alone. I brought nothing but a life of sin and pain. Oh, but you clothed me with your grace. Your forgiveness I embraced. You removed all my sorrow. And my shame. Come on, guys. Let the song that I see bring on to your name. Let this melody be pleasing to your ear. Let my worship, let my worship oh, yeah. and praise bring a smile, bring a smile to your face. Oh, let your glory. Let your Come and feel this place. Come on, kids. Lord, let my life so be all you want it to be. Let your love, oh, let it be felt in me. Come and search my heart. <laughs> Come and cleanse every part that your glory will be seen in me. Oh, stop. Let your glory, let your glory come and be this way. Holy One, Lamb of God, lover of my soul, so close I feel the warmth of your face. By your mercy and your grace. Come on. Holy One, Lamb of God, lover of my soul. So close, I feel the warmth of your face. Redeemer, Savior, mighty God and King. Mercy 
of this world, that the people of God arise in prayer and arise in worship, spending time with God, declaring that His glory fill, fill, fill our hearts, fill our homes, fill our churches, and fill this nation. But us as the people of God have got to be used as those vessels. See, I don't know about you, but I'm in a, I'm in a time with God. 
that I'm crying out more than I've ever cried out. I'm praying more than I've ever prayed. I'm spending more time at his feet than I've ever spent. Because there's a lot more at stake than there's ever been. And more than anything, there's people for our lives out there. I'm going to let them sing that chorus just one more time. And I'm going to tell you, if you're watching out there today and maybe you're saying, well, I don't know about this presence thing. I don't know when you talk about that. You can get there today. Just open your heart. Take this time also, too, as we sing that again. I'm going to tell you, I believe God here in the house and those that are watching, God wants to do something special for you today. Some of you have felt fear and lonely. Oppression and depression have come upon you. God wants to touch you today. Yes. Let his glory fall on you right here and where you are right now. God wants to touch you. Amen. Let's just sing that for let a minute. The soul, let us see. you've done and for what you're going to do in the precious precious name of Jesus well we want to welcome you I'm Pastor Sandy here to Passion Church this morning we're so glad that you're here in person and watching by Facebook live later on YouTube and also you can go to our website and hear it on the podcast but I'm telling you we're so so excited about what God's doing. We're going to give you a couple of opportunities this morning as the ushers will serve you to give your tithes and your offerings, but also we got a special surprise. Amen. Danny Johnston is in the house. So we also want to give you an opportunity to give towards him. So if you're in the house, write on your envelope, Danny Johnston. That will go directly to him. If you're watching online and you go online to pay your tithes and offering, you give an extra offering on there, just put in the comments down there or the memo, put Danny Johnston. So we will be sure that that goes to him. I'm telling you, when a man of God, when a prophet of God comes unexpectedly, this was not a planned meeting at all, but God knows what he's doing. I'm telling you, earlier, a few months ago, we had just declared to God, God, just go ahead and surprise us. We're not going to agree with all this other stuff that's going on. We're degree, agreeing with surprises and blessings and goodness. Surprise us. So when this happened, we just said, there's a surprise, surprise, surprise. Our brother, whom we love so much, 
God has just blessed us with such a friendship and such a man of God. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss out giving into his ministry. Because this man, I'm telling you, is changing lives all over the world, turning things upside down for Jesus. And he's got something for you today. Those of you that are here and those that are you that are watching, he's got a word for you. So please make sure that you put on there for Danny Johnson separate from your tithes and your offerings. Amen. Um, I do want to just say before I pray over that, I want to say thank you to all of the women that participated and helped over the weekend for the Friday night and the Saturday services. I'm telling you, we had such an awesome, blessed time. I'm telling you, we had all kinds of, uh, 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 of testimonies already that we've heard some, but I'm telling you, we know that there's more to come. We had people viewing at one time, I think on Friday night, at one time on a Friday night, not in the house, they were viewing like 160-something views, were watching, so that was good for us. We were very thankful on Saturday morning, there was more than that. And I was thinking on Saturday morning, a lot of people could be doing a lot more things than watching in, but I'm telling you, I believe what we did this year, that round table, heart to heart, hearing from women, from all perspectives, from all uh, stages of life that God showed up and showed out. And there was many of you that helped behind the scenes. Uh, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for helping uh, me to make this another success. And I believe in next year is going to be our 10th one. And I'm telling you, I already know God's going to do something special. Next year is going to be really, really, really special. So you be in expectation, be praying. Let's be in preparation and prayer and preparing for this already in advance for a great, great, great time. Amen. So once again, we want to also, too, give you the opportunity that if you're watching and you say, well, maybe I can't give online, go to our Facebook page or, or our website. You can also text. You can come by the church also or mail it uh, in the mail. Uh, we always have someone here Monday through Thursday, 9 to 12. So we want to give you that opportunity. We also want to encourage you to, to listen to the messages that Pastor Bruce does on Tuesday mornings, Pastor from the Porch, Thursday, Pastor in the Pasture. I'm telling you, these are encouraging messages. We want to help to stay connected, keep you connected. So once again, we love everybody out there, and especially those of you that are part of the church family, that you're not here. We miss you. We love you. And we're so excited that we're getting closer and closer to getting back together, better and greater than ever before, in Jesus' name. So, Father, we just pray over the tithes and the offerings and this special seed for Danny. I just thank you, God, for supernatural increase, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we mix our money with your money, God, that with you, and that we just declare, Father, right now, that the windows of heaven will be opened upon us and that we'll be blessed beyond measure. I thank you, God, that we declare that even in a time of famine and things around don't look good, that the people of God, when they stay faithful, faithful to God, God will show up and we'll be blessed to be a blessing that we can thrive in a time when it looks like lack for others. We will thrive in the name of Jesus. And I thank you right now for touching lives and touching hearts, touching anybody that's watching God, that they will today receive. They will have watched and they will not. And even those that are in the house are going to leave changed in the name of Jesus. And we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus name. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Sandy. Uh, I'm Pastor Bruce. I have the unique privilege of uh, introducing the man of God today. And he's used to being down there, but you got to be up here today, brother, so that we can get uh, uh, in uh, viewing distance for all of the folks that are not just near here, but the ones that are afar out there in uh, social media land. I want to read a verse of, of Scripture. As Pastor Sandy uh, had said, we had, uh, we had prayed. You know, this has been a whole year of surprises. How many of you have been surprised this year? <laughs> over happenings and never seen anything like this. Well, you know, there's a God who we have yet to see. Oh, the unfolding and the revealing 
where you'll never uh, what's about to, what is he's about to uh, show that we might know never seen a God like this amen so I want to read this verse of scripture as Pastor Sandy has said we'd prayed well Lord you just surprise us you know uh, this is a year of sudden and unexpected and surprises so Lord surprise us you ever get to a place where you know uh, you stop telling God what you think he should do for you and just say you know what Lord you know what's best we trust you surprise us so um, uh, in light of Danny uh, being here today and again and just this it really is a setup you know uh, it is a setup and if we'll step up I believe God has some things for uh, us today that there's seed you know Sam says should should we receive the offering for Danny before or after I said well, what do you do first you always sow seed before you get a harvest now when you get the order right everything works right amen well I'm just going to wait and see if he does a good job yeah, that'll be alright amen I'll wait till I have corn on the cob, then maybe I'll think about sowing a seed. No, sow your seed. Got to grow it quick, and it, that's how it works. That was free. But anyways, this is out of Job, the fifth chapter. It says, if I were in your shoes, I'd go straight to God. I'd throw myself on the mercy of God. After all, he's famous for great and unexpected acts. There's no end to his surprises let's pray for the man of God comes Lord surprise us you started something that you're well able to finish I thank you that faith rises in the hearts of your people in an expectancy to after all Lord you are merciful we throw ourselves on your mercy we're running straight to you today and we thank you for the blood of Jesus and we thank you that you are famous for great and unexpected acts and we know that there is an unending unlimited supply today of your surprises say this with me say so surprise me God well, amen come on man of God Well, give the Lord a shout of praise, somebody. Ah, oh, you can do better than that. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm talking about my God, your God, our God is in the house today. Aren't you glad of that? I love you, the saints of God at Passion Church. You that are watching, if you don't have a home church, ever all this has passed away guess what when this has passed away we're gonna have revenge it's gonna be called revival I would encourage you to come out if I lived in Alexander City Alabama I would come to this church I love you pastors how many of you here today would say you love pastors Bruce and Sandy come on shout amen I believe they do But I'm so glad that you're here today. I'm so glad that I'm here today. And with me, I've got my sister. I'm so glad my sister is here. But you know, above all things, he's here, Kelly. Above all things, he's here. Aren't you glad of that? Come on, somebody. Shout, he's here. As I was sitting there a moment ago, I've never done this before, but the Lord says, Bernice, you're being set free. You're on the verge of giving up. You're on the verge of calling it quits. You're saying, Lord, I can't take it anymore. But God says, hold on just a little bit more, my child, because your breakthrough is almost at the door. Oh, can somebody shout amen? Raise your hands up. 
Yes, daughter of Zion, he's touching you right now. I've been seeing you on Facebook, and thank God for Facebook. But I thank God more so for the book. But I've seen you, I've been praying for you, Kelly. I said, Lord, just touch my sister. And there's some things you've been saying, Lord, what about this and what about that? There's some issues you're saying, Lord, I need your answer. I need your, is that right? I mean, there's some specific things, not just some itsy bitsy teeny weeny, but there's some some major issues. And I've seen you on Facebook, I knew I'd see you today. And God said to tell you, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, because I've not forgot about you. You said, my Lord, you've touched this when you move for that one. Oh, God, but what about me? He says, I am your God. I am your master. I'm your king. I'm your heavenly father. And know this, that your breakthrough season is just around the corner. So do not give up, but continue to look up, and everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Some of you that are watching today, you've gone through the rough and the tough. But God said, hold on because I'm still God. The enemy has a plot, but I have a plan for you. If you're ready for that plan to be, be in fold, to come on, shout amen. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 glory, glory, glory. You that are watching, you can't see this, but brother in the sound booth, with the hands raised, keep them raised. God said, get ready because there's a mighty shifting coming. There's a mighty changing coming. And what you do, I don't know what you do, but God said there's a mighty shifting coming, a mighty changing coming. And he said it's not going to happen when the summer's over. But you're going to start seeing the beginning stages as the summer begins to end. You're going to see a mighty change. Hell is coming against you to sift you. But God says, my hand's upon you, and I'm going to sift, I'm going to shift you up higher. It's going to be greater. Oh, come on, shout amen. Woo! I feel a Holy Ghost shout coming on. Hallelujah. Oh, God is good. You that are watching, you that are here today, no, I'm an early riser for the most part, not always, but I like to get up early sometimes. Three o'clock comes early every morning. It does. Now, I don't get up at three, but it does come early. But I got up this morning. The Lord's been saying this to me every morning for the past few weeks. Everywhere I've been for the past few weeks, the Lord's been saying the same thing. He said to tell you this, do not worry and do not fret because it ain't over yet. I said, do not worry and do not fret because it ain't over yet. If you're ready for the Lord to begin to change some things, come on, shout amen. Now, the last time I was with you was what? B.C. That's right. B.C. Before the corona devil. Come on now. <laughs> but I love you, the saints of Passion Church. You're a great bunch. Now, the past, what, six months, we've seen all kinds of things, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Come on now. Now, my granddaughter, oh, I love my grandbaby. I love my, my granddaughter graduated from kindergarten, you know, just a couple of months ago when I said her. I says, I said, congratulations. You just finished kindergarten. She said, thank you, Papa. I said, but you know, you, you didn't go back to school for about three months because mommy taught you. I know. I said, but you know why you didn't go back to school? She said, well, Papa, everybody knows that. I said, why is that? She said, because of school. They were out of toilet paper. Come on now. <laughs> good answer. Come on, good answer, good answer, good answer. Now, these things have taken you maybe by surprise but not the Heavenly Father. I got a word for you. I got a word for you. I'll say it again and again. God is saying to the church here in Alexander City, there are some things that has been spoken over you individually, brother. 
Some things have been spoken over you, church, prophetically. And during this period of time, hell has come against you, Sam. It's not going to happen. Do you think one Koran Moran devil is going to stop the word of the Lord from coming to pass? Come on now. I'm talking about even from the foundations of this world. He knew this was going to happen. Come on now. And he's sitting back on his throne saying, ha, ha, ha. Devil, is this the best you got? Come on now. He is still God. Come on, shout amen. Now I've learned how to go with, how to roll with the punches. Come on. In fact, I fly two, three times a week, and on the flight, the flight attendant says, Well, you need to keep your mask on the whole time unless you're eating or drinking. I've learned that a bag of Doritos last me for three hours. Come on now. <laughs> Don't you love the Lord? I said, Don't you love the Lord? Would you stand, please, all across this great sanctuary? How many love and appreciate that praise team? Come on, shout amen. Before we get into God's word, and I love his word, the patriarch Job said, I esteem the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. The psalmist said, I rejoice. Everybody shout rejoice. I rejoice at his word as one that findeth great spoil. The prophet Jeremiah said, the words were found and I did eat them. And they were unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Jesus, our Lord, said, Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And the writer of Hebrews, and I believe it was the Apostle Paul, said that, that his word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Do you believe that? And before we get into God's word this morning, you that are watching today, you that are home, wherever you may be, I want you along with us here at this great church. Can we all just raise our hands one more time and just offer him another praise? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, church. Out of the depths of your heart, begin to praise him. Come on, uh, begin to raise your praise. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to praise him. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody. Let everything that has breath begin to praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Hallelujah. Oh, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will show forth all of his wondrous works. As you're watching now, some of you have been healed right now in your body. As you begin to praise him, when your praise goes up, something comes down. When praise goes up, the healing comes down. When praise goes up, miracles are coming down. You that are here right now, come on, begin to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin to praise him. Begin to praise him. Begin to praise him. Come on, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. But praise you, the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. From the rising of the sun. For they're going down to the same. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Hallelujah. I got a word. Many of you have gone through a rough and tough time. Did the past, what, six months? Do I get a witness? Some of you have lost income. You've lost a job. You've been cut back financially. But God said, it ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. Because he's already gone before you. The Bible says, but my God, your God, our God, but my God shall supply 
Everybody shout that word supply. The Philippians 4 verse 19. But my God shall supply all of your need. And notice in that verse, the word supply comes before the word need. And before the need ever arose, guess what? He's made provision. He's made provision. Your supply is there. He is our Heavenly Father. He won't let you down. He's our Heavenly Father. He won't let you down. And I believe that some of you are about ready to see some shifting, some changes. It's not going to be the way it was before because we're not going to look to this way, to that way, to this source, that source, because He is our source. And I say this to you by the Spirit of God. It's not on my notes. This is by the Spirit of God. Some of you are going to have some very unique avenues of increase. Some unique avenues of blessings coming your way that you never had before, honey. In the red, white, and blue, right there in the third row on the end, raise your hands up, honey. It's been a rough time for you. It's been a rough season for you, mama. But God said, I've seen your heart. Over the years, I've seen your tears. And God said, you're about ready to see heaven open up for you, mama. It's going to be all right. Do you believe in that? Hallelujah. Jerome, the Spirit of God said God's going to turn it for you, Jerome. This week, you're going to see change come. You're going to see a job open for you this week, Jerome. Get ready, get ready, get ready. And when it comes, it's going to come, saith the Lord. You write this church, you call the church, you tell this church what God has done for you. Come on, shout amen. Woo! Hey, 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 hey. I'm ready to preach, I'm ready to preach. Keep on standing, don't sit down yet. We can sit down during the millennium. But I just got a testimony from a church in South Georgia. Georgia. Everybody say Georgia. I love Georgia. Don't you love Georgia? Some of you may not know this, but it's true. I'm a product of a mixed marriage. I am. I am. My daddy's from Alabama. My mama's from Georgia. Amen. But I was in Georgia. I was just in Georgia. Had to be back in Georgia again next week. And a lady comes up to me. And she said, Brother Danny, can I share a word? I said, by all means. She said, you were here a year ago, not in our church, but at another church here. You were sitting out there, and you were calling people up to the front for different needs, different situations. And my daughter turned to me and said, Mama, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. She said, for what, darling? And she said, you know, Every time I get pregnant, I have a miscarriage. I've got pregnant four times and I've had four miscarriages. My body's given me nothing but trouble, nothing but trouble, nothing but trouble, nothing but trouble. I've had trouble keeping a baby. I just can't keep a baby in a full term. It's nothing but trouble, nothing but trouble, nothing but trouble, nothing but trouble. She says over and over again, it's nothing but trouble. But I'm going to go up there because I believe that Brother Danny prays for me. God's going to cause me to keep my baby. And I'm tired of this trouble. Well, she comes up to the front. And she said, Brother Danny, I said, zip it, honey. Don't say a word. I said, because I got a word for you. And she said, what? I said, I said God said the day he is going to give you what? Double for your trouble. And guess what just happened to her? She just gave birth to what? Twins. Come on, shout amen. <laughs> Woo! Hear me. You better get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Maybe you've gone through some trouble in different areas. I'm not saying having babies. I can see a whole bunch of baby makers out there. Come on now. But whatever the trouble may be, he's going to give you double for your trouble, Bruce. He's going to give you double for your trouble, Sandy. And I know some of the family situations. I know some of the things that have happened here and there. And I pray for you 
all the time, guys. And God said, you're about ready to see some things shift, some things turn. The blessings from coast, we are China to coast. Oh, hallelujah. I'm ready to preach. Remain standing, please. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me, please, to the Gospel of Mark? Thank you, brother. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 4. You may be seated. God bless you. Just a moment. You may be seated. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, beginning with verse number 35. If you're there, shout, I'm there. Mark, chapter 4, beginning with verse number 35. And the same day when the evening was come, Jesus saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat in the ship so that it was now full. And Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they wake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And it said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now chapter 5, verse 1. And they came over unto the other side. I want to minister for just a few moments along these lines. We are going to make it. I'll say it again. We are going to make it. Come on, shout that place. We are going to make it. Make it personal. I am going to make it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is life-giving. Your word is life-changing. Father, I believe today, because of your word, which liveth and abideth forever, because of your word, we will never be the same again. We thank you now. We bless you. And all of God's people said together, Amen. As I said, make it personal. I am going to make it. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him that. Say, I am going to make it. Tell him again that he hear you. I am going to make it. In this hour that we're living, it's an hour of trouble and crisis. And in this hour from coast to coast and around the world, people have been gripped by the spirit of fear. But the Bible tells us that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And because of this fear, people are losing their faith in God and faith in the Word of God. Fear. So many people have become so fearful and they're asking the question, are we going to make it? Is everything going to be all right? Well, guess what? Everything is going to be all right. But you've got to shake that fear off. You've got to rise up bold in the face of hell and say, it doesn't matter what may come my way. We are going to make it. I am going to make it. Hell has been coming against many of you in the midst of all of this, and hell has been saying, there is no way for you. But remember, Jesus said, I am the way. Hell says, you're going to have a breakdown. But God says, you're going to have a breakthrough. Hell says, I've scheduled your burial. But God says, I've scheduled your resurrection. But you've got to shake off that Fear. What is fear? Fear is a dirty four-letter word. Fear comes like a mad dog on the loose. What does fear do? Fear comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. What is fear? It is F-E-A-R. False 
evidence appearing real. What is fear? Fear is the dark room where negatives are developed. But fear will cause you to forget. I said fear will cause you to forget. But the psalmist said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. Everybody shout, forget not. And forget not all of his benefits. Now what are some of his benefits? We've got the benefit of his presence. We've got the benefit of his promise. There it is. I like that. We've got the benefit of his power, and we've got the benefit of his peace. But, you know, fear will cause you to forget. And this is what happened here in Mark's Gospel, chapter 4. The disciples, they allow fear to grip them, and fear calls them to forget. But notice, please, the story. Beginning in verse number 35, the Bible tells us that Jesus, our Lord, spoke to his disciples and said, Let us pass over unto the other side. He said the same thing to you. He said, Let us pass over to the other side. He did not say, Let us get halfway there and go down. He didn't say, Let us get halfway there and sink. He didn't say, let us get half of them drowned. But what did he say? He said, let us pass over unto the other side. And so the disciples, they got on board with him in the ship. But the Bible tells us, and also there were other little ships. They were not the same ship, all but little ships as well. They began to follow Jesus and the disciples across the sea. In the midnight hour, they were crossing the sea. There were other ships. Now, don't think you're the only one that goes through that goes through problems and heartaches and troubles and trials and woes and calamities. No, my friend, there are other people that are going through some rough and tough times. But guess what? He is still the God of us all. But here they were in the midst of that storm. Not a, not a itsy bitsy teeny weeny storm, but in the midst, the Bible says, a great storm. Has anybody ever gone through a great storm? Come on, talk to me, somebody. Now, you can call it by many names. You can call it a battle. You can call it a crisis. But guess what? He's going to be with you in the midst of it all. I'm talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were in a fiery furnace. But guess what? God brought them out. Dan was in the midst of the lion den. But guess what happened? God brought him out. Gilligan was on the island, but guess what? God brought him out. Come on now. But I'm talking about whatever you're going through, you can mark it down. Everything is going to be all right. But that great storm arose. But guess what? In the midst of it all, that great storm where the ship was being tossed to and fro, and the winds were blowing, and the waves were beating against the ship, has anybody ever had some winds and some waves beat against you? You say, but what is the difference? There were the winds and there were the waves. And what is that? The winds are the unseen forces. What do you mean by unseen forces? The winds that come against you, what is that? It is hellacious devices coming your way. What is it? It's demonic attacks. It's spiritual warfare. Yes, those are the unseen forces. But also the waves were coming. Were being against those are the seen forces. What do you mean? I'm talking about maybe you're going through some seen forces. Maybe a sickness, disease, pain, infirmity, whatever it may be. Those are the seen forces. But it doesn't matter. But guess what? Because he is still God. Oh, the storm rages, but we're safe in the rock of ages. Come on, shout amen. Hell may come against you in different ways, but we're safe in the ancient of days. Come on. But in the midst of that storm, what happened? Fear gripped the disciples. Fear gripped them, and fear calls them to forget. What did they forget? They forgot about the presence of God. They were on board that ship, 
but they forgot about who was on board with them. The storm was raging, but they forgot about the presence of the one who was with them. Who was with them? The virgin-born Son of God. The prophet's Messiah. Who was on board with them? The great I am that I am. Who was on board with them? Oh, who was on board? El Shaddai, the resurrection and the life. He was on board with them. And let me tell you something, church. Fear will come against you if you allow fear to grip you and bring it down. You'll forget about who is with you at all times. Who is with you? My Lord, my God, my Savior, my King, my Master. Hallelujah. He walks for me and he talks for me. He is my God. He is your God. And he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He said, Lo, I am with thee always. The fear will cause you to forget about what? The presence of God. Also, fear calls them to forget about the promise of God. Now, what promise have you forgotten about? Before this Koran, Moran devil started knocking. What did God tell you? I'm going to bring restoration to your marriage. I'm going to turn your situation around. I'm going to set you free. I'm going to save your children and your grandchildren. Come on. I'm going to raise you up to a higher level. I'm going to get you out of debt. Come on. I mean, what has God promised you? Come on, talk to me, church. But you see, fear grips us. Fear calls you to forget about the promise of God. But what promise did they forget about? Jesus said in verse 35, he said, let us pass over to the other side. Have you forgotten about the prophetic words that have been spoken of your life? Oh, but, but you don't understand. We got this Koran Moran devil, honey. Do you think that's going to stop the Almighty? You think one little old virus out of hell is going to stop the plan and purpose of the Most High God? Honey, he's a lot bigger than that. Come on now. Have you forgotten about the word of the Lord, the promise of God? And every promise that he gives you is what? Is yea and amen. It's going to come to pass, Brother Bruce. It's going to come to pass. It is going to come to pass. Every prophetic word that's been spoken over you and over Miss Sandy is going to come to pass. Every prophetic word that's been spoken over Passion Church, come hell or high water, it will come to pass. But we've allowed, we've allowed fear. We've allowed this Koran devil to cause us to begin to shake and tremble. We've allowed this to forget about what God said. But what did God say? God said, let us pass over to the other side. He didn't say we're going to get sick. He didn't say we're going down, down, down. He didn't say it's going to get rough and tough. He didn't say that. He said we're going to make it to the other side. And I've come to tell you this day as a man of God, it doesn't matter what it may look like, sound like, feel like. The Bible tells us in Numbers 23, verse 19, for God is not a man that he should lie. If he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, it will come to pass. I love that. It says that God is not a man that what he should lie. I love that verse. But I love Titus chapter 1 verse 2 a lot better. It says, and God cannot lie. Don't allow fear to cause you to forget about the promise of God. Woo! Fear calls in to forget about the presence of God. Fear calls in to forget about the promise of God. But also fear calls him to forget about the power of God. The master was on board. But they forgot about what the master had done in days gone by. They forgot about the power that was manifested through his life and ministry. They forgot about how Jesus had cleansed the leper. How Jesus turned the water into wine. How Jesus walked upon the water. How Jesus fed the 5,000. How Jesus raised the dead. How Jesus went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. They forgot about the power of God. Let me ask you something. Have you forgotten about what God has done for you? Have you forgotten about how he picked you up out of the lowest point of your life? 
He set you free from the chains and shackles of depression, oppression, and hell itself. Have you forgot about how he saved your soul? Have you forgot about how he's healed your body? Have you forgot about how he turned your life around? Have you forgot how God has blessed you coming in? And how does God bless you? Honey, but fear will cause you to forget about the very power of God. But also fear will cause you to forget about something else. Fear will cause you to forget about the peace of God. What kind of peace did the widow receive when Jesus raised her son from the dead? What kind of peace did Jairus receive when Jesus raised his daughter from the dead? What kind of peace is available for you? But I love what it says. Here they were, that storm, that great storm was raging. And they woke him up. What was he doing? He was asleep. He was asleep on the hinder part of the ship on a pillow. Now, how in the world could he do that? I mean, how could Jesus sleep in the midst of that storm? What did Jesus say? Jesus said, I only do what I see my Father doing. And I only say what I hear my Father saying. And what did he say? He said what the Father said. He said, let us pass over to the other side. He was sound asleep. And they woke him up. They said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And the Bible says, and Jesus arose. Everybody shout, he got up. Yeah. Come and shout it again. He got up. Come and shout it again. He got up. And guess what? He's going to get up for you. He's going to rise on your behalf. If you call upon him, He's going to rise and show you great and mighty things. But the Bible says they called upon him and he arose. And what did he do? He rebuked the winds, the unseen forces. And he's going to rebuke the, what? The unseen forces of hell that's coming against you. He rebuked the winds and that he spoke to the waves and said, what? Peace be still. Come on, say those three words. Peace be still. Say it again. Peace be still. Now, in the original, when he said peace be still, it means this. He said, be muzzled. That's enough. And guess what he's saying right now? He said, peace be still. He's saying right now to the th storms that is coming against you. He said, be muzzled. That's enough. I read another version that says, shut up. No more from you. Come on now. And that's what hell is trying to do. He's trying to bring you great havoc. But Jesus is saying, be muzzled. That's enough. Shut up. No more from you. But he spoke, peace be still. And church, guess what? The same one that spoke, peace be still. Who was it? The Prince of Peace. And the same one that spoke, peace be still, to that great storm. I believe this, Pastor Bruce. I say this. It's not going to be long. This thing's going to be dragged out by hell itself. But he's going to speak peace, be still. To the things you're going through. The things you're facing. The things you're up against. Oh, come on, shout amen. But let me close with this. My first closing. Jesus said, let us pass over to the other side. But a great storm came against them. Let me ask the question, who sent that storm? Well, God did. No, he didn't. Because the enemy, the devil, the thief, the wicked one, comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But our God comes to give us life and life more abundantly. I like the words of the late, great John Osteen. Brother Osteen said this, God doesn't send the problems, but he won't waste them either. I like that. Because in the midst of all, he'll prove to you that he is still God. He'll prove to you that the throne of heaven is still occupied. 
But you say, who sent that storm? The evil one, the wicked one, the devil. Why? Because he did not want them to what? To pass over to the other side. You say, but what was on the other side? Look at it. Look at it. Mark chapter 5, verse 1, the Bible says, and they passed over. Come on now. They passed over. But what happened in the next verse, verse 72, as soon as they passed over, the Bible says, and immediately a man who was full of devils, come on, a man who was demon-possessed, a man full of a legion of demons, came running the tombs. Come on now. But guess what? He was set free. And what else? After he was set free, the woman with this blood, she was healed of that disease. Come on, shout, thank God. What after that? Oh, are you ready? Are you ready? And after the man was set free from the legion of demons, after the widow woman was healed of the disease, then Jairus' daughter was raised from the dead. Woo! Hear me, Passion Church, you that are watching. Hell is sin, you're not going to make it. But if you only knew what was waiting for you on the other side. If you knew what was on the other side of your mountain, you'd begin to shout right now. Come on now. If you knew what was on the other side of that storm, come on. Guess what? you begin to get happy right about now. You say, what's on the other side? You're going through the storm. Come on now. You're going to make it. He said, I didn't say, but he said, let us pass over. Because, hear me, church, on the side of the storm we're going through right now, you're going to make it. What's on the other side? Greater blessing, greater victory, greater miracles, greater healing, greater joy. Greater peace, come on, show my body. Greater revival, greater salvation. Woo! Greater Amos 9 13. Come on now, is on the side. You are going to make it if somebody believes that. Come on, show. Amen, amen, amen. How come I give the Lord a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. I feel good today. And you that are here today at Passion Church, you that are watching online, you're going to make it. Why? Because Jesus was on board with them, and Jesus wants to be on board with you. But my question is this. You that are here, that are watching, are you ready? Are you ready to meet the Lord? You see, we don't know when our life will be over. Our life could end so quickly, so abruptly. It could. I attended a funeral celebration from my cousin Friday night. We don't know. It was an accident he was involved in, and he didn't make it. What about you? You don't know. You see, your life could be over so quickly, so abruptly. But I'm strong. I'm healthy. Maybe so, maybe not. I remember about two years ago, I was in Atlanta, Georgia, and my flight was canceled out of Atlanta. I said, when are you going to go home? They said, the first flight you can get on board is to be tomorrow about noon. I said, i got to get home. I had an urgent meeting I had to get to the next morning. And I said, well, that won't do. And so I got a rental car. And I was going to drive from Atlanta, the airport in Atlanta, to my home in Virginia, 400 miles away. And so I took off out of Atlanta on the interstate. Going down Interstate 85, and I looked in front of me, and I saw cars over the medium. Cars pulled over. I don't know what it was, and Pastor, I pulled up there. It's in Winder, Georgia, outside of Atlanta, maybe 40 miles on the side of, of Atlanta. And here it was, and I, I pulled up and saw people there, and you couldn't get around because the road was blocked and everything. But I said, what's going on? And I saw a couple cars flipped over, some more cars, you know, had been, you know, smashed up, and I got in my car. I walked up, and about from here to the back wall, there was a man laying there in the medium that pulled him out of the car. And I walked over there, and, and, I, and I was saying, what's going on? He was there. You would see him, and people gathered around, and you know, people saying, call, somebody call 911. So come 911. No, they said, we've done it. Call 911. And I saw him, and normally I would have kind of stayed back, but I felt the stirring of the Lord saying, you need to go minister to him now. And I went up there where he was, and I could tell he was hurt and bleeding all over, bleeding all over. And I walked up and said, excuse me. He said, who are you? Well, I don't like to use this term. I said, I'm Dr. 
for Danny Johnston. I may give an honorary doctorate, you know. You know, so, oh, okay, come on through. I don't think there was a doctor of divinity. Come on now. I'm Dr. Danny Johnston. Oh, well, come on through, Doc. Come on, go on. No, sometimes it's okay to toss it around if you need to. Come on now. <laughs> There's a time and a season for all things. Come on. And I walked over there, and people gathered around, and, and here was Dr. Johnston. He was laying there. He was hurt. His larynx was crushed. You tell he was hurt in voice by his barely breathing. And I looked and I knew that I knew that he didn't have long. And I said, Sir, I said, Can you say I said, if you understand what I'm saying, just blink your eyes. blink your eyes. I said, if you're a Christian, blink your eyes. If you're not, you know, just don't blink them. He didn't blink his eyes. I said, Sir, you've been in a major collision here. I said, I don't know. You know, if you're going to make it, I trust your will, sir. I said, but let me ask you a question. You don't know that you're going to make heaven or not hell. If you do, blink your eyes. He began to blink those eyes. I said, you can't repeat this after me. But when I say something, if you're in agreement with it, I want you to blink those eyes. He said, Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son. He began to blink those eyes. He said, I know I need you in my life. He began to bleed those eyes. To make a long story short, I led him in the sinner's prayer. I led him in the sinner's prayer right then and there. And about the time I finished leading him in the prayer, about that time, here comes the 911. The ambulance come pulling up. Everybody get back up, back up. But guess what? I was there at the right time. Guess what? But I found that a little bit later. Guess what? He did not make it. Come on. But I'm glad to say this. He passed over to the other side. Hallelujah. What about you, church? Life can be uncertain, but you've got to know that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're ready to meet God. But I'm a good person. That's not enough. I've gone to church all my life. That's not enough. You've got to be born again. You've got to say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. You're the Lord, but I'm asking you as the Lord, the risen Lord, to come in my life and be the Lord of my life. You that are here today at Passion Church, you that are watching online, let me ask you this. Do you know that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're saved and ready to meet God? Brother, would you come and just begin to play? Begin to play. Begin to play. You look at me, church. Your life could end so abruptly. I trust not. Your life could be over today. I trust not. But I'm asking, do you know that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt you're ready to You that are here today, this great sanctuary, you that are watching online, I preached funerals in my life of young children who were in their preteens. I preached funerals of those in their the teens, the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and 90s. We don't know when life down here will end. But you see, life is not down here. It's but a vapor, the Bible tells us. And beyond this life down here, there's eternity. There's a heaven again and a hell to shun. How do you make heaven? You must be born again. You must make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. So everybody that's here today in this main sanctuary, you that are watching, if you're not where you should be with God and you know that you need to give your life completely, fully, totally to Jesus Christ, everybody pray this after me. Pray it out loud, out of your heart, where you are in your home or where you're watching from. Pray it out loud. Say, Heavenly Father, ask you right now to come in my life. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. You paid the price for my salvation. You shed your blood for me to wash me clean of all my sin. You died for me, but you rose from the dead for me. You are the living Lord. Death could not hold you down, but you're alive forevermore. I believe that with all my heart. And I ask you right now to come in my life and be the Lord of my life. Take over my life, every part of my life, from this time forth and forevermore. And with your help, with your strength, with the power of your Holy Spirit, I will live for you. 
I will serve you. I won't turn back, but I'm yours, all yours. You're mine. We're together forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. You that are here today and you that are watching, if you pray that prayer, you believe it from your heart, guess what? You're part of the family of God now. You're saved. You're heaven bound. What do you do now? You that have given your life to the Lord. Or maybe you made a, a recommitment, a fresh start. What do you do now? Let me give you three tidbits. Good tidbits. Number one, you pray every day. But I don't know how to pray. Someone say, I don't have the big Christian terminology of prayer, the prayer words. How do I pray? You pray like this. You pray like you talk to your best friend. You talk to God like you talk to your best friend. Just leave out, just leave out the cuss words. Come on out. What else? You read your Bible every day. You read your Bible every day. This is a good book. It is. I know the author personally. Amen. We're family. Come on now. And what else? When possible, you need to find yourself a good church. As I said earlier, I highly recommend this church. Passion Church. Amen. Because you'll come, you'll be loved, you'll be blessed, you'll be favored. I know that many of you here today, you that are watching, there are other needs in your life, not just salvation. But maybe there's a need of healing in your life. Maybe your home, your family, your marriage, like a pound of cake, red explode. Maybe you haven't told your son, your daughter, your grandkids in ages. There needs to be reconciliation. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you've been downsized. Raise your hands up, honey. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you get raising it right now. God said, get ready. You're going to see a turnaround here in the next few days. Come on out in the next few days. But you that are watching, and maybe it's not salvation, maybe other areas. You say, but I need God Almighty to rise up strong and speak peace be still to the things I'm going through. Today, he's going to do it. Today's your day. You that are watching where you are right now, I want you to raise your hands if you could and would as an act of surrender to the Lord. And you that are here in this great sanctuary, I want you to do that too. Let's raise our hands up to him as an act of surrender. Father God, I ask right now, That you administer to every man, every woman, every boy and girl that is here. Father, you know what they need, what they're facing, what they're up against. But I know that I know that I know that you're a mighty God. You're a powerful God. You're our God. Father, I have no doubt about it. You're going to turn these situations all around. You're going to speak peace, be still to these storms. The heartaches, the crisis, the battles they're going through. And everything is going to be all right. Amen. You that are watching online, God bless you. Be sure to tune in next time. Next time we have somebody really great to minister, Pastor Ruth. I love you. God bless you.